So good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, nano seminar uh, at uh, the Catalan Institute of Nanoscience and Nanotechnology. This is our uh, one of our seminars on uh, material science. Um, so today we are we are having a very nice uh, speakers. Uh, our um, important speaker, or keynote speaker, is Professor Namju Park from Korea. And as all our um, conference on nano seminars work, we will have a, a senior researcher giving a 10 minutes presentation before our main talk. So I'm gonna introduce the, the, the uh, student and then after her student, I will introduce Professor Park. So let me introduce you first, uh, Sonia Ragan. She is a senior researcher in our laboratory and she will talk to you about uh, Characterization of perovskite solar cells. She's expert on uh, impedance spectroscopy and related characterization techniques. So thank you, Sonia. You have 10 minutes for your presentation. I'm very glad you're here. Thanks, Monica, for the presentation. So thanks for inviting me to, the, to this preliminary talk. I will talk about the in situ characterization of a perovskite solar cell that to elucidate the origins of a reversible light soaking effect. So the motivation of this work, it's to, because as we all know, perovskite solar cells have some uh, reversible uh, performance evolution. So in some cases we have this uh, initial burning and then it can recover or the performance increases over time. So this has been reported by several papers. And it's very likely that all these uh, effects are originated by several different processes. So the idea is whether we can isolate just one process and study it in detail. So as we all Everyone that's doing perovskite solar cells knows that the spiral omtet, it's a tricky layer on the device because it's very poorly controlled. In order to gain high conductivity, we have to add additives, which these are the usual ones. And even if we spin coat the whole transport material in the glove box, we have to take it out to air to become oxidized and increase the conductivity. So we have some variables that are uncontrolled, the temperature, the humidity, and the time. So the spiral omtad becomes oxidized and some byproducts are formed. And also there is another uh, uncontrolled uh, parameter that some water or oxygen can penetrate into the perovskite and start the degradation. So for this study, what we did, it's to avoid the use of additives that need air exposure. So we synthesize the spiro TFSI molecule, which really gives you oxidized spirals in the HDM. And with that, controlling the mole fraction of this component, where you can control the conductivity of the film. So this is our starting point. And with that, we can precisely give the spiral doping a uh, very low doping. And when you have the spider with low doping, you can see that there is a very strong light soaking effect. So over seven hours, the performance slowly increases to a quite high uh, efficiency. So it's almost 0% to 15%. And what's interesting is <clears throat> that this it's a reverse, reversible overnight. So the next day you can light soak and it's happens the same thing again. So how can we study these phenomena in real time? So what we did is to measure in situ measurements of uh, impedance spectroscopy all over the IV curve. So each of these points is one, impedance, one separated impedance spectroscopy measurement. And we did this at different light soaking times. So we collected a lot of information over seven hours of our solar cells. Actually, we have a reference one, which is the highly doped spiral. 
so with that, we got uh, different Nyquist plots from the impedance spectra that look very different <clears throat> depending on whether it's collected at the initial times or on the high uh, dope sample. And we have to analyze them. So the equivalent circuit chosen to analyze it, it's a very simple one because uh, we don't want to get too deeply into the complicated equivalent circuits on perovskites. We can get enough information just by using a very simple circuit. So the first thing it was observed, it was that with the light soaking, remember this is an encapsulated sample, it's not exposed to air, but just with the light soaking, the conductivity, the resistivity of the HDM, which is uh, related to the conductivity, <clears throat> the conductivity increases over time, which is exponentially increasing. Well, the resistivity exponentially decreasing from over 50 ohm centimeter square to a very negligible resistivities that doesn't affect the performance that much. So it's uh, the reason for that is that the spiral molecules are becoming oxidized because the conductivity of the spider is related to the hoping mechanism through the, the oxidized molecules. <clears throat> so we know this is a very huge resistance that it's affecting the other parameters of the impedance. So one thing what, that you need to do before continuing analyzing the impedance is to correct that serious resistance a voltage drop. drop. So this is an example of uh, correcting the, the series resistance. So you can see the internal voltage of your device. So the IV curves will look a, li a little bit different. <clears throat> so now um, analyzing the other uh, resistances extracted from impedance, we see that the, the high frequency resistance that's usually uh, related to the recombination resistance inside the device. So as you see, as long as you approach the VOC, your recombination increases, and also uh, the resistance decreases exponentially. So this is something clear and understood in all the high-performing solar cells. But on the solar cells in which the IV curve has this S shape, so this would go eventually to, to a JSC here, but around the VOC, we have this uh, higher slope, lower slope of the IV, which is seen in the impedance as a, a exponentially increasing resistance with applied voltage, which behaves totally opposite of the recombination resistance. So we know that there is an internal uh, resistance in the device that it's causing us uh, the poor performance apart from the higher resistivity of the spider. So we know that this should be uh, located at the spiral interface. So there is a whole blocking barrier that uh, it's like an inverted diode inside the device. So up to this point, we really don't know where it's this barrier located. We know it's somewhere around the HTM. So for that, we complemented the study with the in-situ measurements of the photoluminescence. So we measured the photoluminescence at different applied voltages, trying to reproduce the IV curve. And we observed that when the device is a, has very poorly performing in the very beginning of the light soaking, the luminescence is very high at all uh, voltages applied. So what does it mean is the photoluminescence, it's high when all the charges that you generate recombine. So it means that the inside your device, you are always at the open circuit because all your photogenerated charges recombine. So nothing is ex extracted to the electrodes. And as long as you light soak the device, you see that around the VOC, where you don't have extracted charges, the luminescence is the highest. And as long as you read the JSC, where you extract all your charges, the luminescence quenches. So this gives us the information to tell that the blocking layer, it's located 
just between the perovskite and the HTM interface. So right here as an inverted diode. And to conclude, we have shown that there are two effects caused by the low doped spiral that's causing this reversible performance increase. One is the low hole transport layer conductivity that's increasing over time. And the other is the whole extraction barrier at the interface of perovskite and spiral. So what we observe is that the photogenerated holes from perovskite should be the ones that are oxidizing the spiral because there is no other components there. There is no air exposure or other dopants. <clears throat> so the holes from perovskite go into the spiral and oxidize its molecules. But we need to maintain the electron neutrality. So our hypothesis is that the negative charged ions are slowly diffusing into the HTM to compensate the charges. And the, this slow diffusion is what's causing that uh, it needs seven hours to, to complete the process. So, okay, that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Sonia, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. I just remember everybody that you can use the chat to have some questions. And if you have any questions for Sonia, we will discuss it at the end of the session after Professor Park's uh, talk. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you. So now uh, it's a, a real pleasure for me to introduce you to the, our keynote speaker today, Professor Namju Park. He's a professor at the Sun, uh, I hope I don't say it wrong, uh, Sun Jun. Kwan University in Korea, <laughs> okay? Um, so it's impossible in a few minutes to, to summarize uh, Professor Park's curriculum, extraordinary curriculum, um, the many honors and awards. What is very interesting, uh, and I'm sure everybody knows, uh, everybody who is interested in perovskite solar cells, is the great achievement in 2012 when he developed the first solid state perovskite solar cells. Uh, with long-term stability and very nice, uh, very high power commission efficiency for that time. Uh, um, his, his works have been pioneering, uh, are, he's pioneer in this uh, perovskite solar cell. He was candidate for the Nobel Prize in 2017, uh, together with Professor, uh, with Henry Snaid, with the, the uh, Henry Snaid and... Uh, Henry Snaid, Miyazaka. And Miyazaka, yes, I'm sorry, I just, the name. So they were uh, candidates for the Nobel Prize. Uh, it was a great honor. And all his work has been, um, uh, has a lot of repercussion in this uh, perovskite solar cell area. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for coming. I promise I will bring you in person someday. And uh, thank you for being here. Please, uh, if you can share your screen. I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, Monica. Uh, for inviting me to this uh, very uh, special event, special conference, ICN2. Well, I like to give a talk about the uh, uh, perovskite solar cell uh, uh, regarding uh, some uh, the past and uh, the now and a future perspective. I'm again uh, Nam Gyo Park uh, from uh, Seung Gyeonggan University. Uh, actually, the, uh, the solar photovoltaic market uh, is expected about uh, 250 billion US dollars uh, uh, in uh, 2030. And uh, the compound annual giga rate of the uh, uh, about 10.1% is expected. That means uh, the photovoltaic market gradually increases. Uh, 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 up to uh, 2030. And also, uh, the uh, recently, uh, some of uh, the uh, market research uh, report the uh, global photovoltaic uh, perovskite solar cell market. And uh, it is uh, uh, the, uh, about 6.6 .6 billion uh, US dollars by 2030 is expected, uh, uh, which uh, means that uh, compound annual giga rate of 32.4%. It's a huge uh, growth uh, is expected. And also, uh, the, uh, when you uh, search the publication 
uh, using the web of science machine, uh, then uh, the uh, during uh, 1990 uh, to uh, the 2020, uh, as of today, uh, the uh, solar cell uh, related publication reaches uh, 200,000 uh, results, uh, which is uh, uh, pretty much uh, the larger than, uh, greater than the, uh, the fuel cell and the lithium battery. That means uh, solar cell uh, is also a very interesting topic in academic uh, field. The proskite uh, is uh, uh, the uh, mineral structure with the chemical formula of ABX3, as you know. Uh, here, the A site has the cubo octahedral geometry, and B has the octahedral geometry. Uh, well, I like to use the uh, some. Okay, here. And uh, X is anion. Uh, usually, uh, uh, for the uh, probe sky solar cell, the B site cation is lead 2 plus or the uh, tin 2 plus or the uh, mixed alloy. And A site cation, uh, the previously we used uh, usually the methyl ammonium, but now we use the form amadinium uh, cation. And also, the form ability of the perovskite uh, is uh, uh, simply expected by tolerance factor uh, based upon uh, the ionic radius. And if tolerance factor uh, the, uh, lies in between uh, 0.8 uh, to 1, one is actually the uh, ideal cubic structure. Then you can expect the uh, perovskite phase. Well, let me introduce uh, briefly the history of a perovskite solar cell and move on the uh, major achievement uh, during uh, the uh, uh, last 10 years, for last 10 years. And then uh, the finally, I like to uh, mention about uh, what to do for next uh, 10 years. Well, uh, uh, actually, uh, I uh, started solar cell research since 1997 uh, with, Art, uh, with Art Frank at National Renewable Energy Lab. At that time, uh, I studied dye-sensitized solar cell uh, which was invented by uh, Professor Michael Gratchel, EPFL, Switzerland. Uh, this specific solar cell include the liquid type electrolyte. At that time, I got the uh, long time ago, uh, I got the 9.2%, uh, which was actually uh, the world second world best efficiency. Uh, the, however, the, uh, the, uh, based upon uh, dye sensitized solar cell uh, the, uh, experience, uh, I uh, also uh, the, uh, developed the perovskite sensitized solar cell, uh, which actually uh, was first reported by uh, uh, the Professor Tam Yasaka in uh, 2009 uh, uh, with the efficiency of about 3.8%. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, uh, two years later, uh, we got the 6.5% efficiency by adjusting uh, the pre solution concentration uh, uh, in uh, gamma butyl lactone uh, solvent. And uh, we found that about 1.2 mole solution uh, produces a highly reproducible uh, perovskite. Uh, at that time, this kind of quantum uh, dark morphology sitting on titanium oxide surface. And uh, with a lower, a very low, uh, uh, Major plus titanium oxide film thickness of about 3.6 micromet, uh, we got the 6.5%. However, uh, the, we still use the uh, liquid junction, uh, dye sensitized solar cell structure at that time. Uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, liquid junction uh, type uh, solar cell, uh, the MAPBI3 perovskite is, uh, uh, is, is very fast uh, dissolved. Uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, ionic nature uh, in the polar liquid electrolyte. Therefore, uh, the, uh, uh, the question is how to solve this uh, dissolution problem. Then uh, uh, the answer is very simple. Uh, we can uh, switch the uh, liquid electrolyte with a polymer hole conducting material. First, uh, I tried uh, with the uh, well-known the PCRHD uh, polymeric uh, hole transporting material. However, at that time, the efficiency was not uh, uh, the, uh, good because uh, uh, it was very difficult to infiltrate uh, polymeric material into major porous titanium oxide. So uh, in order to uh, uh, 
make the infiltration easier, then uh, we switch it uh, uh, polymeric uh, transporting material to molecular uh, HTM, uh, such as the uh, spiral uh, compound. Spiral is backbone, this, uh, the inside is spiral backbone, and uh, usually the uh, methoxy, uh, the uh, end group. And then uh, it, uh, we uh, switch this, uh, uh, we use the molecular for uh, transporting layer, a spiral compound. And then uh, as usual, uh, the, uh, for the case of the uh, disensitized solar cell, we increase the PM thickness uh, up to uh, two micrometer. However, the efficiency uh, could not be uh, increased. Uh, that is because uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the absorption coefficient, for instance, uh, the absorption coefficient of the perovskite is one order of magnitude higher than the uh, conventional uh, sensitizer uh, coded N790. This is a ruthenium complex. And uh, because of low, uh, the absorption coefficient of the N790, then uh, you have to increase the uh, film thickness uh, to uh, increase the concentration of the uh, N719 uh, uh, molecule. This is uh, well known the, uh, based upon Beer Lambert law. Uh, if you have the law, uh, the uh, absorption coefficient, then you have to increase the uh, film thickness. Uh, therefore, uh, because we know that the uh, one order of uh, higher the uh, absorption coefficient of uh, perovskite uh, material. Therefore, uh, you don't have to increase the film thickness uh, just uh, uh, simply based upon beer Lambert law. So uh, instead of increasing film thickness, uh, we decrease the film thickness uh, from two micro to one micrometer. And then uh, a gradual increase of the power conversion efficiency was observed. Uh, so we further uh, decreased uh, uh, up to uh, 0.6 micrometer, and then uh, uh, a gradual increase in uh, power conversion efficiency was observed uh, uh, because of the uh, increased open circuit voltage and increased the field factor without sacrificing uh, short circuit particle density. This is a, a proof of concept uh, of the uh, some uh, beer Lambert law. And uh, finally, uh, we can get the 9.7% uh, efficiency and uh, the uh, more important uh, the point in this research is the long-term stability. And we uh, show that the uh, 500 hour stability without encapsulation, uh, because uh, in, uh, at that time, uh, the, uh, for instance, uh, the perovskite, uh, the sensitized titanium oxide layer was uh, fully covered with the uh, kind of the uh, hydrophobic uh, spiral compound. Therefore, we can, uh, 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 they effectively protect the uh, uh, perovskite from the moisture intake. So uh, uh, the, uh, we reported uh, for the first time uh, the stable high efficiency solid state perovskite solar cell in uh, 2012 uh, with uh, Professor Michael Gratzel. Uh, he actually uh, provided a very uh, nice the, uh, spectroscopic data. And uh, this paper uh, has been cited up to uh, 7,200 uh, times as of today. And uh, this is a kind of the summary of the uh, perovskite solar cell research activity. And uh, 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 we are a number of the uh, publications. Uh, 2009, uh, Tamiya Saka published one paper of, uh, in the uh, JEX communication. And only one paper uh, came out in this year. And then the next year, there was no paper came out. And uh, two years later, we published uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, improved efficiency of perovskite solar cell, but still uh, we use the liquid electrolyte. And there was no uh, the paper uh, the, uh, the followed by our uh, the, uh, publication. And then uh, after our the, uh, solid state, uh, the report, solid state perovskite solar cell report, uh, with the Professor Michael Gratzel. And also uh, two months later, uh, the Hellenist Days group uh, reported also a similar solid state of drop scar solar cell. And then uh, the publication increases exponentially. Uh, as a result, uh, we have the uh, more than uh, 5,000 uh, publications last year. And then still uh, this, uh, the publication increases. Uh, since uh, 2012, uh, of the, uh, the solid state of perovskite solar cell uh, development, uh, a huge progress uh, has been uh, achieved. 
uh, for instance, uh, uh, the, uh, the power conversion efficiency was improved uh, from 9.7% to uh, all, uh, the above uh, over 25% efficiency. Those kind of the uh, uh, rapid uh, power conversion efficiency was uh, possible uh, due to the uh, coating engineering uh, and also the compositional engineering. The coating uh, to make the uh, high quality, uh, the perovskite film, uh, now people use the, uh, the kind of the uh, uh, adduct uh, intermediate method. Adduct is a well-known uh, inorganic uh, compound. Uh, if you uh, react with Lewis acid and Lewis base, then you can make the adduct uh, uh, quite stable, but uh, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, bonding between the Lewis acid base is uh, weaker than even hydrogen bonding. So uh, this is, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the adductor you can control a uh, very short time and then uh, 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 the, uh, you can make the uh, high quality uh, perovskite film. Because uh, uh, in uh, the precursor solution, usually we have the, we include the PBI to PBI is well known with acid and then the polar or protic solvent such as DMSO, DMF, uh, 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 well known the Lewis base. Uh, Therefore, uh, is, uh, we can uh, naturally induce the uh, Lewis acid base adductor film. And then uh, if you remove the uh, solvent, uh, only solvent, then you can induce MAI, PBI to DMSO adduct. Okay? This was possible by uh, dropping uh, diethyl is uh, while spinning uh, the uh, wet film. And then uh, instantly you can uh, get the adductor uh, uh, film. Uh, and then uh, the, you can heat up uh, the, uh, this adductor film uh, to eliminate uh, the ligand the DMSO. And finally, you can get the high quality MAPBS. Now people use this kind of the adductor method. And the compositional, regarding compositional engineering, first we uh, use the methyl aluminum lead iodide with a band gap of about uh, 1.56 uh, uh, to uh, 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 1.6 EV. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, if you change the uh, A-site cation, actually uh, changing the A-site cation should not infect influence on the band gap change. However, uh, A-site, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the change of the uh, A-site cation uh, from uh, methyl ammonium uh, uh, cation to form ammonium cation, uh, there is a slightly decrease uh, uh, in band gap. Therefore, uh, you can, uh, uh, the harvest uh, more light uh, uh, because of the uh, band gap uh, is reduced to about 1.47 EV. Uh, the problem uh, for the uh, FA PBI3, pure FA PBI3, uh, because of the uh, little bit the larger size of the FA cation, uh, then uh, the, uh, the tolerance factor is slightly higher than uh, unit. Uh, there's, uh, therefore, the, uh, there is a phase transition from alpha phase to uh, delta phase when you cool down this uh, uh, the uh, uh, FAPBI3. Uh, delta phase is uh, uh, non-perovskite uh, phase and uh, it's not active for the photovoltaics. Therefore, to stabilize alpha phase FAPBI3, we usually use a smaller cation such as cesium and methyl ammonium, rubidium, uh, et cetera. So this is called the stabilizer. If you use a small amount of the, uh, uh, for instance, uh, cesium, uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, even you can uh, stabilize the alpha phase at room temperature. And uh, then uh, the, uh, what to do for next 10 years? Well, uh, we actually, we got uh, uh, now it's 25.7% uh, was reported, uh, almost over 25% was reported uh, uh, during uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, past 10 years, uh, for past 10 years. Uh, and then uh, for next 10 years, uh, probably uh, we have to uh, try to get the theoretical efficiency uh, by managing a recombination issue uh, interfacial engineering and grain boundary engineering to uh, divide uh, the uh, interface and the grain boundary engineering. And long-term stability is very critical issue now. Uh, the, uh, there is uh, uh, some light stability, moist stability, and I think the summer stability uh, over 85 degrees C is uh, most important uh, the topics 
uh, in terms of long-term stability uh, task. And also uh, the, uh, the uh, managing the toxic lead to plus ion uh, is a very important uh, critical topic. Uh, this is related to safety uh, issue. And for commercialization, uh, probably uh, we uh, uh, the, also the company is developing a larger uh, coating and devices and uh, tandem uh, technology. And also the flexible perovskite is, uh, uh, is, uh, 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 is a very advantage over other uh, flexible uh, photovoltaic materials. For higher efficiency, uh, actually, uh, the, uh, if you uh, take a look at, the, if you plot the uh, current versus uh, uh, voltage times field factor, uh, then uh, the perovskite uh, uh, sitting here uh, is, uh, well, uh, the uh, voltage uh, is a slightly, uh, voltage and field factor is slightly higher than the silicon, uh, but the current is a slightly lower than the silicon. And uh, uh, when you compare gallium arsenide, uh, the current is higher, but uh, it's uh, uh, pretty much lower uh, for the, uh, the open circuit voltage field factor uh, than uh, the gallium arsenide. Therefore, uh, we have to uh, consider, we have to uh, carefully consider open, it, uh, the open circuit voltage and field factor uh, for the case of the perovskite to uh, reach the ideal uh, point here, then uh, we can get over 30%. Still, uh, the uh, for instance, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the data uh, from the solar cell efficiency table version of 55. And then uh, based upon this data, the perovskite solar cell, uh, uh, for the case of perovskite solar cell, voltage loss is about 0 0.38 volt, which is uh, still uh, higher than the gallium arsenide and uh, silicon. Therefore, we have to uh, find out the methodology to improve the uh, open circuit voltage and also uh, the uh, field factor. Well, uh, the if you uh, there is some uh, recombination issue. Uh, for instance, if we have some uh, trap state here uh, in bulk uh, perovskite, uh, then uh, we 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 have the uh, some uh, uh, the uh, defect induced recombination issue or the non radiative recombination. So we have to uh, reduce non radiative recombination, even though uh, this material is defect tolerant. Uh, the, uh, the perovskite has a higher defect density than uh, silicon gallium arsenide. But uh, the, uh, if you uh, consider the trap density, the perovskite is uh, much lower than uh, silicon and uh, CIGS. Uh, in spite of the uh, uh, low trap density, uh, we have to decrease further defect density to reduce uh, further the trap density. Uh, for the case of the 1.6 EV, uh, the, such as the MAPBI3, then uh, by interfacial engineering and bulk engineering, we can get the 30.1% uh, efficiency. Uh, it, uh, in this case, the open circuit voltage will be 1.3 volt and the field factor will be uh, 91%. And short circuit photocurrent density will be uh, about 25 milliamps per square centimeter. And if you switch this material uh, to, uh, with the FAPBI3, uh, lower band gap FAPBI3, such as 1.47 EV. In that case, uh, you uh, gain more the uh, short circuit photocurrent density uh, uh, the, uh, being close to uh, 30 million uh, per square centimeter. In that case, the open circuit voltage may not be higher than the, uh, the uh, larger band gap material. Uh, the ideal uh, open circuit voltage will be 1.17 volt based upon uh, the uh, voltage loss uh, is about 0.3 volt. And then uh, the uh, uh, shock request uh, power conversion efficiency based upon 1.47 EV uh, material, then uh, we can get over 31% efficiency. So there is a room to improve uh, the open circuit voltage and field factor. And uh, interface engineering is uh, therefore very uh, is critical uh, the, uh, topics uh, for instance, uh, here normal structure, inverted structure, uh, we have uh, uh, the same uh, the number of interfaces uh, here and also grain boundaries inside the perovskite. Therefore, we have to uh, control all of the interfaces because uh, uh, the, the, the important point in this uh, and our uh, the perovskite solar cell structure is uh, uh, the interface is the hetero uh, interface, it's not homogeneous interface. Therefore, it is very difficult to uh, 
uh, the uh, many hetero interfaces as compared to homo interface. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, this is an uh, example. Uh, then how can you select the some uh, passivating uh, agent? All right. Uh, then uh, the uh, we propose that the uh, the uh, pKa value uh, is uh, uh, important. Uh, for instance, uh, low pKa value and high pKa value. Then, uh, as compared to con uh, uh, then uh, the high pKa value shows the slightly higher pC than uh, the low pKa value. This is due to uh, the low pKa value, the passivation agent uh, such as uh, penyl ammonium chloride is uh, shows uh, uh, will give the more deprotonation. More deprotonation is uh, combined uh, react with iodide, and then uh, the uh, the iodide uh, will be released. Uh, okay. A free iodide will react uh, 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 the, uh, for instance, under the illumination uh, will uh, be uh, the, uh, uh, the iodine form, okay? And therefore, uh, the, there is some, uh, uh, the iodide uh, defect uh, can be generated. Uh, uh, so uh, we have to use the uh, high pK value such as 10.6 and uh, uh, a slightly higher pC uh, can be observed, can be obtained because of the uh, the iodide defect uh, can be reduced as much as uh, we can. And also uh, the functional group is uh, important. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, such as the additive, uh, here, this is additive. Additive, when you select additive, you have to consider the functional group. Uh, then uh, uh, we compare the electron donating functional group and electron withdrawing functional group. And uh, there is some opposite direction as compared to control device. Electron donating functional group shows the higher, uh, better uh, improved uh, uh, IV uh, property. However, electron withdrawing group shows the uh, slightly uh, lower uh, power conversion efficiency. Uh, this is due to uh, this uh, indicate that the uh, uh, in propskite uh, the film has a, a, a little bit uh, the uh, some uh, defect uh, due to the uh, missing iodine. And then for stability improvement, uh, the uh, people usually use the uh, hydrophobic, uh, the, uh, the uh, passivation layer between the perovskite and uh, spiral hole conducting material. Uh, however, uh, if you increase the long chain, uh, the aliphatic uh, the, uh, material, then uh, uh, because uh, then uh, probably uh, there is some problem in the, uh, Hole injection from the uh, perovskite to hole conducting material because of the uh, the insulating layer. Uh, therefore, uh, we would like to reduce the uh, the carbon chain. Uh, however, uh, we introduced the uh, uh, two functional group hydroxyl and uh, the ammonium group, and then uh, we found that hydroxyl group is can uh, react with the surface of uh, uh, the uh, perovskite layer. Therefore. Uh, by doing this, uh, the strong uh, interaction uh, with uh, uh, the perovskite, uh, the surface, uh, we found that the, uh, those kind of uh, the uh, passivation uh, interlay, those kind of interlay can protect well the uh, perovskite layer from the uh, moisture, and then we show the uh, better uh, improved long term stability as compared uh, without passivation uh, uh, the process. And uh, the uh, thermal stability, uh, especially the 85 degrees C, thermal stability is very important. For instance, uh, if you make the, uh, the normal structure uh, with the uh, mesoporous titanium oxide, MAPBI3 and spiral, and then uh, the IV curve looks here is uh, working uh, the normally. And uh, once you expose this device at the 85 degrees C for some time, then uh, the, uh, the performance is uh, significantly degraded, almost dead. And then uh, this uh, probably due to uh, the uh, spiral compound, the spiral layer. So uh, we found that uh, a highly crystalline spiral, uh, uh, the morphology was found uh, after 85 degrees C uh, exposure. Uh, then uh, probably uh, you can lose the uh, conductivity of the props, uh, the spiral compound. So we removed this uh, aged uh, uh, spiral compound and replaced uh, with a very fresh new uh, spiral compound, and then uh, the IV curve is uh, recovered. This means that uh, handling a spiral is very important at high temperature. Uh, 
and for instance, uh, uh, this is mostly at high temperature, the uh, lithium TFSI, uh, lithium uh, cation uh, is uh, uh, migrated uh, uh, the, uh, into the uh, perovskite layer. Therefore, uh, the, uh, this migration uh, loop the, uh, the induces some crystallization of this pyro and also uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the some uh, uh, the lost uh, uh, the uh, conductivity uh, is lost uh, by this uh, lithium migration. So uh, we found that uh, if you uh, design uh, some uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, whole transporting material uh, with a very stronger uh, with a stronger uh, interaction with the lithium cation, uh, maybe uh, the may uh, solve this problem. So. The HL here, the HL38, the molecular structure shown here, and then uh, we uh, this this uh, molecule was provided by the uh, French group, and uh, we found that uh, the HL38 uh, shows the uh, much better or summer stability than the uh, spiral compound uh, because of the uh, lithium, uh, the cation is uh, a stronger uh, interaction, strong interaction with the HL38 uh, material. And also uh, the MACL, MACL uh, usually to make the high efficiency uh, FAPBI3 uh, perovskite solar cell, people use the uh, excess MACL uh, such as 35% or the 40% MACL. And uh, the while heating the FAPBI3 uh, Brico solution, including MACL, most of the methyl ammonium, methyl cation and chloride anion is evaporated, escaped from the film. And a very small amount of methyl, ammonium, and the chloride is still uh, in uh, FAPBI3 film. The, usually, uh, the MA uh, is a volatile uh, compound. Therefore, uh, this is not good for the uh, some long-term stability. So we would like to replace MACL with PACL, a little bit uh, uh, longer alkyl chain, such as propyl uh, ammonium cation. And then, uh, uh, the uh, as compared to MACL, uh, we found the improved the, the uh, carrier lifetime and uh, uh, better long-term uh, stability. Uh, uh, this is also the uh, thermal stability. Uh, uh, this is humidity stability tester. And uh, in terms of stability, the MA is uh, volatile, but uh, uh, the PA, uh, propyl ammonium cation is less volatile. Therefore, it seems to be uh, better than the MACL uh, as additive. Uh, finally, I'd like to mention about uh, the perovskite, uh, the bulk structure, uh, strain uh, modulation. Uh, when you make the uh, perovskite, uh, uh, then uh, the surface is different from the uh, substrate because of the this kind of the, uh, the uh, tensile strain uh, happens uh, at the surface. Uh, and then uh, if you uh, somehow manage uh, the surface structure, then you can make the uh, wrinkle morphology. This wrinkle morphology actually can be uh, formed by uh, controlling the uh, some uh, the uh, diethyl is anti solvent temperature or the substrate temperature. Uh, the diethyl is uh, temperature is very important, uh, and then uh, we uh, the uh, make the uh, uh, variety a uh, variety of uh, uh, the uh, wrinkle uh, morphology depending on composition here. And uh, the, uh, this uh, wrinkle morphology can be uh, the, uh, explained uh, by a simple, the uh, solid, uh, the elastomer, the bilayer model uh, used for polymer wrinkle morphology. And uh, interestingly, we found that this uh, wrinkle morphology, the heel site uh, has the uh, longer uh, carrier lifetime uh, as compared to belly side. This is uh, good for uh, charge transport and uh, protection of recombination of the thicker uh, layer. And finally, uh, now we use uh, the uh, some uh, QSS method, uh, the quasi uh, steady state power conversion efficiency that uh, has been uh, that is now used uh, used for certification. Uh, from the uh, Newport uh, in USA. And uh, we uh, are not using the uh, reverse fold scan. Therefore, the, uh, now the, uh, for instance, uh, the hysteresis index uh, 
uh, does not uh, give any uh, meaningful uh, the uh, mean uh, the meaningful uh, some of the, the uh, data. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, the instead of using reverse fold measurement, uh, the uh, we uh, use the uh, quasi steady state power conversion efficiency uh, quasi quasi steady state uh, the uh, measurement, and then from this uh, uh, QSS measurement. Uh, uh, now uh, we uh, obtain the best efficiency of about 24.64%, which is uh, a little bit lower than 25%, but we are struggling to achieve the higher uh, efficiency. I'd like to uh, the, uh, wrap up uh, my talk. Uh, well, a higher efficiency toward the sharp request limit value over 30% uh, is possible by managing interface and bulk recombination. Uh, stability is very critical issue. Uh, the, uh, there is a uh, light soaking and the humidity heat uh, uh, tester and uh, thermal tester. So uh, for instance, temperature test is uh, very important. Uh, uh, well, uh, this is uh, actually the, uh, uh, the IPC, uh, this is ISC, uh, the regulation. And uh, the recently I found that the uh, 85 degree thermal stability is very, very important. For instance, even uh, you have the high efficiency based upon spiral or transporting material, usually a uh, high efficiency uh, was uh, achieved by using the uh, spiral compound. However, a uh, spiral is very weak uh, at uh, 85 degrees. So we have to find out uh, a very uh, excellent, very uh, a good method uh, to uh, the, uh, guarantee the summer stability of crop sky solar cell. And upscaling technology, in that case, a low temperature process is very important. And also, uh, if you apply the perovskite uh, photovoltaics to electronic uh, some industry, then the low temperature process is very important. Therefore, uh, probably uh, the high temperature TiO2 may be uh, uh, replaced by some low temperature tin oxide or some other oxide materials. And finally, the, uh, the toxic uh, lead two plus ion uh, is a critical issue. So to protect uh, lead exposure, uh, we have to develop the immobil immobilization method uh, uh, not to release the uh, lead two plus ion into the uh, environment. All right, I'd like to uh, thank uh, my uh, students, uh, the alumni, and also the current students. Uh, most of my students are working now at university, and also Samsung HANA, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, forward tech uh, specialist company. All right, thank you uh, for your kind of listening. Thank you very much. It was a fantastic talk, very interesting, very clear. I have many questions, but we also have a lot of questions from the audience. Uh, so let's start reading some of them. You can see them in the uh, Q&A part and also in the chat. So let's start uh, from, from, the, from the chat. Mm. Uh, the first question is uh, what is the voltage what voltage was the cells the solar cells kept between measurements in your original stability of 500 hours test in 2012 I don't uh, I, I, I did not catch up uh, with you what uh, what is the, uh, 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 the question uh, can you see it in the in the chat can you open the chat questions I'm reading it from there and uh, I will read it again. It says, what is the voltage? Uh, 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 well, uh, well uh, I have to, uh, it's not working. No, I can read it again. It says, what is the voltage? At what, uh, what voltage was the cells kept or maintained between measurements in your original stability test at 500 hours that you reported in 2012? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, the uh, long-term stability. Uh, you mean the uh, in twenty twelve? Uh, yes. Five hundred. Yeah, five hundred hour stability. Uh, yes. It, yeah. In that case, the uh, the uh, the measurement is uh, uh, is not well established at that time. 
So we just, uh, uh, the, uh, the voltage, at that time, the voltage is a little bit low because of the, uh, we use the uh, small quantum dot uh, morphology sitting on titanium oxide. And then the device, once you make, we make the device, and then uh, the, we keep the, uh, some ambient condition and then measure, uh, keep the uh, uh, ambient condition, a stored ambient condition and measure again. This is uh, uh, not light soaking method. Uh, okay, I think it's very important also to, to uh, uh, your QSS method, Professor Bark, is very interesting. So that will be a, a time for another talk huh, about that, about that uh, methodology. It's very interesting. Let me go to another question. Um, uh, thank you, Professor Park. This is from Richard Morday. Uh, for the information talk, what is the current... Uh, uh, thinking about the origin of non ideal ideality of the field factor in solar in perovskite solar cell, the the limit is calculated for the ideality factor n one, but real devices are usually one point five or higher, which leads to lower field factor. How should we go about designing PS uh, solar cell system for higher field factor? Oh, yes, uh, actually, uh, the, uh, the ideal factor uh, one is uh, kind of the uh, most of the uh, recombination is radiative recombination. So actually, uh, this is ideal, uh, ideal case. Uh, in order to get the high field factor such as uh, one 0 0.9, something like that, uh, then uh, the, uh, we have to uh, the uh, approach most of recombination is uh, composed of the radiative recombination. This means that the trap density, we have to, uh, we should decrease a lot the trap density. Trap density, actually, uh, the uh, first we have to uh, decrease trap density by managing uh, grain boundary engineering. And also next step is the interface engineering. Here, uh, the interface engineering is uh, between HTL and uh, perovskite and uh, perovskite and uh, uh, ETL. So, uh, by doing uh, those kind of the uh, the grain boundary engineering and interface engineering, probably we can get uh, uh, higher field factors. Uh, recently, uh, the uh, uh, 0 0.85, 0 0.86 field factor uh, is uh, achieved and reported. Therefore, we are very close to an uh, ideal field factor. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Another question. Uh, any comments on the stability of uh, the synthesis of thin base perovskite active layer in open air environment and the use that's, of additive? That's a very good uh, uh, the, uh, question. Uh, actually, we are now doing uh, some alloy compound, the uh, thin uh, lead uh, based uh, alloy compound. Uh, then uh, it's very difficult because uh, tin uh, is intrinsically, uh, it tends to oxidize uh, uh, from the uh, tin 2 plus to tin 4 plus. And uh, the, there is uh, uh, some uh, factors affecting oxidation, but uh, uh, the oxygen uh, is very critical. Therefore, if we uh, protect well the oxygen, uh, this uh, and uh, Precursor solution probably uh, it's very difficult uh, to to make the uh, hundred percent uh, tin two plus. Uh, there is some uh, defect in the tin uh, two plus ion. Therefore, uh, well, uh, we have to manage well the uh, the precursor solution uh, in order not to produce tin four plus. Uh, but uh, we have to uh, encapsulation uh, protect uh, encapsulation. Uh, to protect the oxygen invader. Uh, this is uh, my, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the answer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, another question is, um, uh, um, it says, um, thank you, Professor Park, very interesting results. Was your long-term stability test done under continuous illumination? What scan rate did you use for this measurement? Or what would you do? Do you recommend? Is there significant effect of the rate over a prolonged stability test? Uh, for long term stability on the illumination, continuous illumination. Yes. And uh, uh, the question is 
I'm sorry. The question is uh, the effect of the scan rate. Do we know the scan rate uh, uh, Oh, scan, I think scan rate is not so important uh, for long-term stability measurement. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think the, the, uh, the maximum power point is more important. Uh, and yeah. uh, the scan rate, actually scan rate is, uh, uh, is not so important uh, for uh, uh, the long-term stability and illumination. Well, if you yeah. do, this is if you do maximum power point. And yes, in yes. our lab, we are comparing maximum power point and also IV curves, uh, taking into account the scan rates. We, we optimize the scan, we try to optimize the scan rate when we fabricate a new solar cell, but we are also doing a long-term stability test and we have okay. maximum power point, but also uh, IV curve. Yeah, in, in, in uh, here, uh, I, I, I mentioned that about the, uh, well, this is uh, the, so I think the, uh, because uh, the forward liver scan measurement is not uh, the accurate method now, I think the, because uh, it depends on, uh, the data is strongly dependent on scan rate. Uh, therefore, uh, instead of using uh, the uh, scan rate, uh, for the reverse method, uh, I like to propose the uh, quasi state state measurement is uh, better than uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, we have to get uh, to know that method. Very nice. Thank you very much for that response. We have more. I think uh, I think I saw that Professor Pedro Gomez wants to do a live uh, question. Pedro, can he? Can you do that? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, let's go for another uh, question. Uh, can you explain a, a bit more how it works your QSS uh, measurement? Is it useful to track uh, power conversion efficiency under the whole device degradation under aging tests? Yeah, I, I think this is actually the uh, recently, uh, very recently, I asked my student that uh, the reverse forward scan measurement is, uh, is not accurate. Therefore, uh, uh, also I asked, please compare the uh, reverse forward scan measurement and QSS uh, uh, data. And then uh, there is a big difference uh, uh, between uh, uh, those two uh, measurement system, especially the shunt resistance greatly affected by a measurement. So uh, for instance, uh, uh, if you have very uh, nice the, uh, the IV curve with uh, uh, the low, uh, the uh, less shunt, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, current, uh, then uh, this device, uh, uh, if you apply this device uh, to the uh, QSS measurement system, then uh, you have a very uh, large shunt uh, the current. So uh, from this, uh, we found that uh, the ETL layer, conformal coating of ETL layer is very, very important. So uh, the, even though you have certain problem in uh, the uh, ETL layer, uh, if there is some, uh, it's not conformal coating, then uh, you cannot figure out the uh, shunt resistance or shunt uh, the uh, leakage current uh, from the reverse for the measurement system uh, by uh, uh, some uh, changing the scan rate. However, we found that uh, the quasi state state uh, means that uh, at the given voltage, uh, the program wait for stabilized current. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, 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 there is a huge difference in uh, shunt, uh, uh, the leakage current. Well, uh, so I, I like to uh, mention about that. The, uh, so uh, so uh, now people, uh, the, uh, uh, my students use the, uh, the quasi-state state uh, the measurement. Uh, and then uh, once, uh, for instance, uh, here, uh, I like to use here, okay? Uh, if the, uh, well, uh, yes. If the, uh, uh, if the, uh, uh, the, the uh, forward curve, for instance, if you match the uh, here like this, uh, very uh, uh, steady state here, and then uh, like this, uh, something, uh, the IV curve from the reverse forward measurement. And then with this device, uh, uh, the uh, QS measurement applied to this device, probably, uh, 
you can see something like, uh, for instance, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's uh, like very uh, the uh, uh, large leakage current happens. So uh, this means that uh, uh, your device has a problem in the ETL layer. ETL is uh, not uh, conformally coated. So uh, then uh, the, uh, the my students actually uh, the developed a uh, highly compact uh, the uh, ETL layer, and then uh, uh, he can get uh, such as, uh, for instance, like this uh, uh, data. So this is a QSS. QSS measurement is very uh, important. So now uh, I believe that the QSS uh, gives uh, gives us very accurate uh, data without mentioning about hysteresis. So now hysteresis uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, doesn't make any sense uh, in uh, Perovskite solar cell. So QSS uh, is enough. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, I have many questions, especially from me, but I'm gonna, I want to give the, the, the microphone to Professor Pedro Gomez Romero. He's a group leader. Also, he works on uh, in this research institute. So Pedro, do you want to ask something? Uh, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we cannot see ah, you. Okay, great. No, never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's great. Uh, thank you very much, Monica, because I, I thought I would be tied up uh, to chatting since this is uh, 21st century. Uh, Nam Gyu, uh, it's so nice to, to see you again. Uh, uh, this is Pedro, and we met at uh, Art Frank's uh, laboratory. Oh, really, Pedro? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very, Here I am. So three months, uh, three months, yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, Pedro. <laughs> yes. You. Okay. Uh, it's nice. And um, I, I wanted to thank you for so much help then, and congratulate you for the great job you have done with uh, with these perovskite uh, solar cells. My goodness. But let me tell everyone that you look as young as you were then. I mean, <laughs> I don't know thank how you, you do that. Okay. <laughs> I look my shoulder really, <laughs> and but it 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 was so nice to be able to to talk to you, not not just through chatting, and uh, concerning the uh, oh well, uh, we met at Art Franks and then in Korea where you invited me to the Korean Battery Society two thousand three. Yeah, uh, my question is very general because I'm not working on, on, so, on solar cells, mm -hmm. the photovoltaics. I work on energy storage, supercapacitors and so on. And, and the general question, I, I'm sure you have been asked hundreds of times for the toxicity of lead. It's, it's, it's not just that, it's more general because uh, is, this is a general problem. Uh, imagine cadmium telluride, wonderful material, but cadmium toxic, tellurium, very scarce. So I, I wanted to ask you for your personal uh, opinion about this safe by design trend that seems to be imposing upon ourselves. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, Pedro, uh, it's uh, very nice. To, it's, uh, uh, it's unfortunately, I, I cannot see your face. Uh. <laughs> that, that, that's good because I look much older than <laughs> when we met last time. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I, I look at the, uh, the, uh, the PB2 plus toxicity, uh, lead toxicity, uh, and we have to, uh, we should not avoid, we should not hide this kind of uh, uh, toxic issue. We mm -hmm. have to disclose, uh, and uh, even though uh, lead two plus uh, PBI two, for instance, uh, the whatever methyl ammonium uh, lead iodide, uh, form of lead iodide, uh, is uh, uh, under, uh, for instance, uh, the moisture instability, uh, moisture can uh, decompose this material to produce uh, lead iodide, PBI two, mm -hmm. and the uh, PBI two is. Uh, the solubility product uh, is about the 10 to the minus A. Uh, well, 10 to the minus A is still uh, is, uh, uh, low 
a very uh, low uh, dissolubility of PBI2 in water. Uh, however, uh, nevertheless, uh, we should decrease further the uh, solubility product of PBI2. Uh, there is a very good method uh, uh, in uh, the heavy metal treatment of uh, some uh, academic or industry. And uh, the chemically, uh, we can uh, utilize some of uh, the phosphate. Phosphate is well known, uh, the very strong uh, the, uh, interaction with the lead to plus. For instance, mm -hmm. lead phosphate, uh, the solubility product is about 10 to the 32. It's almost non-soluble uh, 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 material. So this is a uh, uh, good. So we are working on the some uh, the phosphate group uh, 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 the uh, introduce into the uh, perovskite layer. This is post production. Uh, this protection and second protection is the encapsulation. We have to uh, encapsulate well. And then uh, the uh, re recycle process, we have to undergo recycle process. This is uh, similar to cadmium telluride, but as compared to cadmium telluride, well, uh, the, our, uh, the, uh, the perovskite uh, has the very low concentration. Uh, if you consider some whole device, uh, then mm -hmm. the ladder, uh, the uh, concentration is uh, uh, very uh, comparable to the content then you found from the uh, natural soil. So uh, nevertheless, I, I, I'm saying uh, nevertheless, uh, we have to uh, find out a very nice, uh, very effective method to protect uh, leather to plus uh, not to release to the environment or the, uh, the uh, decrease the uh, solubility in, uh, uh, because uh, the, in tap water, uh, this is not good. Uh, so we have to uh, find out, we have to uh, the, uh, uh, find out a very effective method uh, for uh, solve this uh, lead toxic issue. Yes, this is my uh, answer, Pedro. Yes, uh, very nice. Actually, I, I learned a few things I didn't know. And uh, yes, you need to, you are very right. That is something we shouldn't hide. And on the contrary, that maybe with some engineering, uh, it can be solved uh, to a reasonable, uh, bearable extent. Well, thank you very much. It was very nice to listening to you and seeing you uh, online. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, so I'm going to do some questions. It's related to what Pedro says about this uh, uh, toxicity, but in fact, it's about your response because you talk about um, phosphates and how phosphates can interact strongly uh, to avoid lead elimination, for example. And so uh, we have recently reported the use of, of some additives in uh, using phosphates. Uh, it was uh, additives with phosphate and carboxylate groups. And what we found is that we were unable to improve the voltage of the solar cell. That means that we were not passivating uh, deep defects, but we were able to, uh, we, we observed that the stability was very good of the solar cell. We, we didn't have any degradation in 1000 hours at room temperature. And uh, we observed that it was because the phosphate was, the interaction was so strong, it immobilized ions. And we observed uh, um, passivation of shallow defects, okay? Oh, so for great. me, it's interesting to observe this strong interaction. But my question is, uh, if we need phosphates uh, to uh, avoid this, uh, for example, elimination of, uh, avoid the elimination of lead uh, and encapsulation, uh, it won't affect, for example, the voltage and the efficiency of the solar cells. Have you done something about this? Uh, actually, uh, uh, this is uh, just the idea and concept. So uh, uh, because the, uh, for instance, lead uh, phosphate uh, is very strong uh, interaction. That means if you uh, use the uh, phosphate in, in the precursor solution, then uh, probably we cannot make the, uh, uh, the perovskite phase because uh, lead would like to uh, interact strongly with the phosphate anion. Uh, so, this is, uh, uh, so this is a problem. Uh, therefore, I am, uh, I am uh, the... Uh, doing, uh, we are doing uh, some uh, work on the uh, phosphate, uh, the anion. 
uh, to find how to protect anyway uh, the uh, ladder to plus without losing uh, the photovoltaic performance. We are, we are, this is ongoing research. So this is idea. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, this is, I think, the uh, very important work. Phosphate uh, is well known uh, method actually, but the problem is uh, uh, it's difficult to directly use the phosphate in pre solution. But uh, we have to find out some uh, method anyway. Okay. Uh, another thank you. Another question is related to this ion movement. Of course, if we want very stable devices, we mobilize the ion so we avoid this phi segregation and hysteresis. But then people is using halide perovskites for memory stores. I think you are working also on memory stores, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So is the contrary of the working mechanisms in memory stores? You are you are using this ion movement, uh, this ion electronic ionic electronic conductivity of the halide perovskites to have a good device. What do you think about this? Can we work with a memory store that can be stable with time if we don't immobilize? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, memory. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, uh, the uh, if you apply the MAPBI or FAPBI, it's different uh, in, in the working uh, in terms of uh, register of uh, random access uh, memory, uh, resistive memory system. Uh, in resistive switching uh, system, the applied voltage is very important. Uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, we found that. Uh, the operation voltage is less than one volt. So this is a very good uh, to uh, stabilize the uh, uh, perovskite material uh, during the on-off uh, the uh, system. So uh, there is uh, uh, no degradation, but uh, actually uh, endurance, uh, so-called endurance. Endurance is, uh, should be uh, the, uh, uh, the electronic industry requires, require the endurance over 10 to the 8 or 10 to the 9, but uh, the uh, perovskite material so far, the endurance is uh, uh, less than 10 to the 4 or 10 to the 3. So uh, that means uh, the, uh, uh, the stability, long term stability, so called uh, uh, the endurance uh, uh, should be improved. So, but uh, uh, well, I think the uh, more important thing is. Uh, uh, in uh, industry, uh, for instance, Samsung, uh, uh, they do not want to use the uh, PV in electronics. So that's problem. So we are working on the, some uh, other material, bismuth and uh, some uh, other material uh, with uh, uh, the uh, iodide defect or bromide defect. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you. One more um, for me, my last question from me is uh, about the additives uh, to make solar cell higher efficient and stable. I see that uh, almost many people is using uh, additives that have the amino group. Um, mm -hmm. And very few use, for example, these phosphonate groups. Uh, do you think uh, there is a reason? I mean, I know that, uh, as I already said, that phosphonate group and this is a strong interaction, it could be a problem for high efficiency. But what do you think is the best uh, way to do, or, or do you know the best way to, or the best um, additives right now for high stability, but also high, uh, high efficiency, high voltage? Uh, yeah, Monica. Actually, uh, high efficiency, high stability. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I think everybody uh, wants to know it, right? <laughs> yeah. If I know the uh, the uh, the almighty, uh, for instance, uh, the additive, uh, probably it uh, appears in the nature science. <laughs> it's not. Uh, uh, well, I think the uh, anyway we found uh, the uh, the. In our group, uh, or most of the group, uh, they uh, use the uh, MACL, methyl ammonium chloride, as additive. Uh -huh. And also the cesium chloride in some of uh, the uh, partly. Uh, so uh, the methyl ammonium chloride and the cesium chloride is uh, uh, so far the best. But the future, uh, we, we cannot say uh, the, the, uh, those kind of the additive is the best, still best. Uh, so, uh, so far the MACL, uh, the 35, 30%, 32, 40% MACL is very important. And uh, 
we our group we use some amount of the cesium chloride that is working uh, better than uh, only uh, macl uh, for fa pb uh, fa uh, pb uh, i2 uh, compound uh, the perovskite in that case the uh, to achieve the long term stability uh, usually when you use the uh, methyl ammonium chloride large amount of methyl if you use small amount of methyl ammonium chloride in precursor solution you cannot have the high efficiency uh, uh, but uh, if you have the a uh, large amount usually uh, the high efficiency solar cell uh, for instance uh, uh, professor sangil sex group uh, and other uh, the korean uh, high group they uh, always use the uh, about uh, uh, more than 35% uh, the methyl ammonium chloride. Uh, the point is that uh, in that case, you have to very control well uh, the uh, annealing process or the, uh, the coating uh, condition. Uh, uh, that means uh, you have to well control the temperature and humidity. This is a very critical point. Otherwise, uh, uh, if you can control the humidity and uh, the uh, temperature uh, for MACL uh, embedded uh, precursor solution, uh, then uh, you can uh, have the high efficiency and also improve the stability. And uh, uh, you have to, for instance, uh, analyze uh, 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 the amount of the chloride that remain uh, left in the, the annealed film. Uh, the chloride content is very important and the methyl ammonium content is very important. So while annealing, uh, most of methyl ammonium chloride should uh, 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 escape from the uh, perovskite uh, layer. This is uh, very critical. Otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot get the high efficiency. This is a, a very important point. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I think there are no more questions. I hope I, I didn't meet any other questions. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for, for a fantastic talk. I will be in contact you. with you by, in, by email with some information that I, I will ask you. And okay. uh, thank you very much for the, the talk. I really enjoyed it. Very clear and, and fantastic. And also this, this new method for to analyze this QSS method uh, is it, very, very interesting for us. So thank you very much. I hope to see you again soon. And thank you. Thank you, Monica, and uh, hope to see you again. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah.